Recorded live. Hello, Frank. Are you there? Uh, let me see. Hello, Frank. 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 Are you there? Hello? Frank, did I unmute you? I just unmuted someone. This is Terry. Hello? 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 Anybody hear us? Okay. Yeah, thanks, guest for... Um, so you guys can hear me, but we're not hearing anyone else right now. And I'm, I've got everyone unmuted. Great. Thanks, guys. Thanks for letting me know you can hear me. Um, let's see. Darlene99, can you speak? Can you try speaking, see if we can hear you? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, thanks. All right, good. Um, I have someone that doesn't... Uh, I unmuted someone else. And uh, there's no name next to them. Thank you, Darlene. I appreciate that. So it looks like if I unmute you, I should be able to hear you. Um, let me try someone else real quick. Um, let's see. Idaho, I just unmuted you. Could you speak and let me know? Uh, Hi. I can... Hi. Hello? My name is Linda. Linda or Hi. Linda? Linda with an L. Linda. Okay. Hi, Linda. Hi. Thank, thank you very much for uh, speaking. All right. Looks like uh, we're, we're good, but I'm not seeing Frank on the call. And uh, Brian, could you let me know if you have spoken with him? Uh, yes, I'm hosting. I'm logged in right now and hosting, ready for Frank. Hi, Terry. It's uh, Brian. Hi. Uh, yeah, uh, sorry. We uh, I was trying to get in via Skype, and for some reason, uh, even though it's not on uh, on mute, there's uh, there, there's no way of getting through. I just wanted to say that uh, Frank is a little bit delayed. Uh, and tonight is uh, just due to the time difference. It's uh, it's Christmas Eve there, and uh, he will be joining the call tonight. But in the meantime, what we could do is possibly walk through uh, just some of the things that we've uh, discussed, and for uh, for the people out there, is uh, bring them up to speed on uh, what we're doing in terms of uh, how we'll be uh, automating things, and uh, so that each. Um, a group of people can be autonomous in creating uh, their trusts and also records. Uh, so we'd like to possibly walk through uh, the formalization of the first steps of follow-ups on to the ecclesiastical deed poll and uh, take it from there until uh, Frank uh, comes on the call. What do you think, Terry? All right. Well, that sounds good, Brian. Uh all right, let me go ahead and we'll go ahead and get started since things are ready to go here and the uh, call, call is being recorded. And uh, let's go ahead with that plan. If you will introduce yourself a little bit and let folks know um, who and where you are, and um, that would be great. And uh, we'll continue until yeah. Frank gets on board. Thanks. Sure, not a problem. Uh, I, uh, I'm Brian T. Collins. And uh, I first came across 
the Acadia uh, a uh, number of years ago, uh, but I, I'd kind of forgotten about the site. And then uh, I joined, and uh, I actually talked to Frank uh, just per, just shy of a year ago, uh, researching bloodlines, and uh, I saw the incredible work that Frank was doing. And then, uh, of course, is just seeing the, the, the logistics of how this uh, incredible model can unfold is uh, I, I decided to see if I could join and uh, you, you know contribute um, whatever I can. So it's been a fantastic journey in discovery over the last year, as we all, including yourself, Terry, as, as we've all contributed in in, uh, uh, in seeing how this historical work is unfolding, uh, where it gives people a sense of hope finally uh, against the uh, uh, the injustices. Uh, by the unlawful cartels that are out there. So anyway, that's a little bit about myself. Um, uh, what we had uh, planned to do was uh, just kind of follow up also on this call a, a little bit uh, in terms of the notices that were served on uh, December 21st. But uh, first, before we do that, is we'd like to uh, bring to the attention... Uh, over to the uh, University of Eucadia site, which is uh, university.eucadia.info. And if you go to that site, uh, on the post page that comes up, you will see five, five items uh, labeled Ecclesiastical Deed Poll. So when we click on the introduction, is we see... Um, the description of what an ecclesiastical deed poll is. So I'm just going to read out uh, this description. An ecclesiastical deed poll is a valid form of deed poll, and therefore deed and contract, by where a true person first expresses, affirms, and conveys certain rights to another party, who are then lawfully bound upon proof of receipt in accordance with canons, Defined, in, uh, defined under Article 133 of Canonum de Lus Positivum, a ecclesiastical deed poll is permitted to be used when an inferior Roman person rejects the rule of law and seeks to insert an unattainable and illogical position of superior rights over divine law. Now, for those who uh, were able to click on that link and for those listening to the call, is... You'll see that on One Heaven, that's one-heaven.org, uh, the Ecclesiastical Deed Poll, which is on uh, Article 133 of Positive Law. But you'll see that in this link that when we go to the Ecclesiastical Deed Poll introduction, uh, there's certain steps that are starting to be laid out in terms of what you do for follow-up. So really is uh, we want to convey to everybody that the full sense of the authority of the position is that by gaining competence and the responsibility to be your own trustees is how you can get to administer uh, these procedures and, uh, and uh, have them move forward. Uh, Terry, uh, anything you want to add to this point, or should we keep going? Uh, nope, that sounds good. Let's uh, keep going. Great. Okay. All righty. So, in uh, in the first step, and and this is something that is uh, is quite often because uh, a lot of people uh, are are very still new to the idea of what is an ecclesiastical deed poll? Why is it on a blue piece of paper? Um, well, information uh, and research has proven that an ancient rite of spiritual conveyance is done through the usage of uh, certain ancient spiritual inks. One of those was a type of ink that was used across the Phoenician Empire and worked its way up into uh, modern times, is the use of 
the robin's egg blue color uh, which holds true as an ecclesiastical document of authority um, again is uh, for everyone who's out there listening to the call is one thing that we all fall guilty of is slave mind we, we tend to, to look to certain uh, jurisprudence or Black's Law as the law, the definition. But we find that something else is going on that's absolutely Alice in Wonderland uh, compared to court procedure, uh, how documents are conveyed, how titles are moved through trust. And we find out that the essence of the very backbone of what we thought was law is actually private administration uh, with the certain bar associations for an example which are private uh, cartels uh, that are running on bank procedure so we also find that the de facto for an example is running through the Rorick pack side of uh, basically private banking law so in as such, there are certain procedures uh, that have been rabbit holes for so many and for so many people that, uh, you know, follow a certain procedure and they're not getting results. Or they, they've heard of uh, someone that did, for an example, a, an acceptance for value for something and something got discharged and then they try it and it doesn't work. Well, uh, there is an absolute ecclesiastical side to this private law and also uh, the laws that are governing the courts through ROTA uh, currently in effect today. So uh, I hope that kind of in a long way explains a little bit about why it's blue. Uh, it's worked into the ecclesiastical, ecclesiastical side of courts for an example is that you should be able to find usually a chapel that's somehow connected within a court building or to the court building. Now, what's interesting about a chapel is as the redemption of the salvage, or as it's called, salvation of souls, uh, we find that there is a collection going on of souls within the court system itself. Uh, and, and this, again, is run to the ecclesiastical side uh, and why is a judge ha have a certain type of uh, Masonic order to him? It's the black robe, the gala, which is the grim reaper, uh, reaping the souls. Well, it turns out that the chapels within courts themselves are perfect places to lodge deed poles or reverse matters based on forgiveness so uh, we find that uh, f when sending a uh, an ecclesiastical deed poll the first uh, dishonor that's usually done is when you get no response so it's hard for, for someone that that doesn't have the confidence at this point to say well I don't know what to do. Well, the logical issue is this. You have a party to whom you were in trust to that has now fallen silent. Now, silence by ancient right is dishonor. So, by having, for an example, uh, delinquent executors and administrators who have fallen silent through their agents. And by the way, with an ecclesiastical deed poll, the ancient principle of notice to agent is notice to principle, and notice to principle is notice to agent applies in, this, uh, in these matters. So by having that, them fall silent uh, to a deed poll, essentially what you now have is an ecclesiastical dishonor to the trust that the deed poll represents. So, first off, it's it's actually it's it's not a it's. Not